بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شفيع الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم dear brothers and sisters welcome to our community so this week we have another special guest for you and we'll talk about her journey to Islam mashallah we have a guest from um, uh, South Korea and he recently became done his shahada mashallah and we will hear about his journey to Islam inshallah this will benefit a lot of Muslims also there will be information for non-muslim too so without any delay, I'll go to our guest. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, my brother? I'm doing well, thanks. If you could introduce yourself to our viewers, please. Sure. So my name is Taeyeon Choi, and I'm originally from South Korea. And I moved to the UK to study, and I'm studying medicine at the moment um, in Bart's in the London, just right here. And yeah, and I said the Shahada a month and a bit ago, yeah. A lot of our viewers might not understand what Shahada means. So, uh, can, can you explain what Shahada means? Sure. So, Shahada, from what I understand, is the declaration of faith. So, so you say that you believe in only one God and the Prophet, peace be, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be the last Prophet. I think this is really important, for, even for the Muslims. So some of our, our viewers, if they're not Muslims, they'll probably have something in their head. How do you become Muslim? Mm -hmm. So it's one of the amazing sentences is that one sentence can decide your destiny. Mm -hmm. One sentence can put you into heaven. One sentence can link you with God, one who created you. You know, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. There's none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no partner. And I'll be also be witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger and servant of Allah. Mm. You know, this is very a complete, amazing statement that makes change your whole journey. So may Allah bless you. Welcome to the Ummah. Uh, Thank you. I'm really honored that you actually made time for us. Jazakumallahu khairan. May Allah bless you. Nice. Um, how did you hear about Islam? I would love to know. Where did you hear it? Has anyone given you dawah? Has anyone given you any books? How, where did you hear Islam from? So, well, in secondary school, um, religious studies was compulsory. So I've heard a little bit about Islam then. In South Korea, yeah? No, or in here? the in, in the UK, okay. yes. So, uh, yeah, so I learned a bit about it during GCSEs. Um, just, uh, just basics like... Um, what they do during Hajj, what they do during fasting, Ramadan, just a bit about that. And from then I kind of had quite like a good view, um, quite different to some might say. So I didn't have like a bad view of Islam from the beginning. And then when I came to the uni, um, I was in a flat with, with three other Muslims, four other, three, four, three. I'm not sure. Three other, yeah. And just seeing them pray and like them telling me about Islam as well, I was kind of, kind of intrigued to learn more about it. And that's why, I kind, that's why I reached out to some people in my university to help me learn more about it. And right now, eventually, I said wow. the Shahada. Amazing, you know. Um, you know, you said you've seen them pray. Your first impression when you see people pray, what happens? What goes through your mind? I, I wonder how it is. goes through your mind. Because you're not Muslim that time. Yeah. yeah. So what went through your head? Can At you explain? first, I was like, what's going on here? Like, what's going on in my flat? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, I feel like um, it was really empowering to me because how they spend time out of their life five times a day which does not seem like a lot, but it is quite a commitment, if you think about it. And just seeing them pray five times a day kind of made me more in 
empowered and like more close, made me want to get closer to God like, like them as well. So it was really, really incredible to see them. Yeah. You had, I'm sure you had many, many Muslims in your university, in your schools and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, which, why did they click in that time when you see them pray? Not anything else. I'm sure there are bad Muslims around. I'm sure there are Muslims also drink drugs. You know, everything they do as well. Do you get me? How did you um, compare or how did you define that these guys are Muslim and these guys Muslim but they don't practice? Mm. To be honest, um, I didn't really have many Muslim people around me from where I was before. Um, in my secondary school, it was mostly non-Muslims, mostly Christian. It was a Christian school, so I didn't really know any Muslims before university. Um, but pretty much all of the Muslims that I saw until now have been really, um, really devoted in Islam. They've been practicing really well, actually, yeah, so. Bless you, thank you. Mm. Um, you sounds like a very positive person. <laughs> thank you. You want to say good in people, that's brilliant. Did you have a faith before? Did you have uh, any religion that you used to follow before? Yes, so I used to be a Christian. I was born a Christian uh, from my family. And Christianity, Christianity is good in its, um, in its own, as in there are variations as well, as same in Islam as well, but, and so, um, yeah, so I was born a Christian, so I kind of had to follow it in a sense, but one thing, should I talk about Please this? Please do. Um, so one thing that I liked about Christianity is, um, similar to Islam, how close people got in churches and it's, it's another form of worship and people who follow it really well and when I go to church, when I used to go to church is like seeing people sing hymns, listening to sermons. It was, it was good in its, in its regard. Um, um, but s there are some aspects that do not make sense logically to me. So... Would you use an example? Yeah, so... Just to clear, people understand you, um, why you left, because it didn't make sense to you. What did it make sense to you, if you could give an example? Okay, so... Um, so Christianity, um, well, when I was younger, um, I just thought it was a fun activity every Sunday, just going to church. I mean, it was, it was good fun. Okay. But as I grew up, as I thought about uh, faith more, especially last year, um, what kind of didn't, didn't make sense to me was the um, Holy Trinity that's present in Christianity, how God can be one but three at the same time. It didn't really make logical sense to me. But on the other, on the other hand, Islam having like a set, there's only one God. That, that was probably like a key thing for me. Yeah. Okay. I think many people say that. I mean, a lot of uh, um, uh, people taking Shahada everywhere. In World Cup, I had recently, a lot of people are taking Shahada. Mm -hmm, yeah, okay, yeah. It's very interesting because it's, it's uh, we take some blame as a Muslim that we're not a, a good representative of Islam, to be honest. We cl I'm claiming on myself as a Muslim, people might think if this is a Muslim and if he's not practicing, then it confuses people, to be honest. Mm. If we were practicing a, a, in Islam properly and live our life according to Islam, then you would have seen it as amazing. It's, it's amazing, to be honest with you. Yes. And I'm sure you understood that Islam is not a new religion. We promote all the time, Islam is not a new religion. Islam is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last of the prophet. All those prophets we actually acknowledge, we respect, we follow, we, sh we pray for them. Hmm. You know, we actually accept everybody. This is the only religion that accepts every other prophet. Hmm. A prophet of uh, Judaism, the Moses, uh, Jesus, and everybody else. We actually acknowledge them and we respect them. And we pray for them all the time. As soon as we mention their name, we say, but the, um, Alayhi salam, you know, like, mm -hmm. so we always do that. Um, one more question. I know you said you didn't have any um, bad feelings about Islam because you learned Islam in your school days as well. 
Um, but doesn't it affect you when you see stuff in the media? The Muslims are extremists. Muslims are cover the women are covering their uh, top to bottom. We can't see them. Mm. Letterbox, this, that. A lot of names comes. Mm -hmm. How did you react to those? Did you feel that they're true, or did you feel it must be another way of understanding things? Um, so when I was younger, yeah, you're about. yeah. So. From the media, I would, in some aspects, I was frightened. Okay. Yeah, it can't, it can't be said without. But um, I always thought um, a religion. More to that. Yeah, there must be more to that. It's a religion. It, I'm sure it can't be about just um, about terrorism. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So, anyway, yeah. thank you for being honest. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure if I was meant to say that. But. No, 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 that's true. Honestly, that's true. There are some cases, uh, political cases, I would say, like what we see in Syria, Iraq, uh, um, Afghanistan. These are political fights. Hmm. They're defending the land. Others want to take over the government. Others want to kick out the government. These are political movements. And some of them are named, using the name of religion and attracting people. These are political movements, you see. Mm. So they it can be used as their own interests. Mm. And what people are showing in the media, they're bringing something up and they're saying, whole Islam is bad. That's not true. Mm. That's not, Islam allows you to defend yourself, but it doesn't allow you to do any harm to anyone else. Oh. Mm. Um, through your journey to Islam, um, do you have any memories that you can't forget? Can't forget. There are a few, yeah. Go on, share it with us, please. Um, wow, where do I begin? So, I think one thing that comes to mind the, the most right now is um, during last year's Ramadan, um, I tried fasting with some of my flatmates just to see, see what it's like to fast. And... Yeah, throughout those few days, um, it was definitely tough not being able to drink. And one time, um, I had like a chocolate bar in my room and I was really tempted to have it, but <laughs> um, thankfully I didn't have it. And then after that, um, with our university Islamic society, um, I went to an iftar dinner with them. But you know Muslim that time? You just no, trying? No, no. I just okay. trying, just okay. trying fasting, just trying to get myself out there to see, like, learn the culture, pretty much. Just, I was just curious, that's why I tried fasting. And during that iftar, um, um, well, they prayed, is it Maghrib before? Yeah. Yeah, so they prayed Maghrib. And I was in like a group, in the middle of a group of loads of students praying. And one of the students next to me was like, um, do you know how to play? Uh, how to pray? And I was like, no, I'm not sure. He was like, he, so he was. He just said to me, just follow him. So I just tried praying that day, just following the movements. And at that moment, praying. Well, I don't really know what I was doing, but it really cleared my head in a sense. It really empowered me. It was a very weird feeling. Say the least, say the least, and because you didn't know what you're doing, to be honest, isn't it? Yeah, well, I didn't know what I was doing, yeah. but it felt it felt nice. It felt nice, okay. and then after that, the dinner was amazing. Um, how everyone was just gathering around, talking about their lives, football mainly, <laughs> and just having a nice dinner. It was really a nice experience. Yeah. Um, you said another, you got another one. Do you have another one? Another one. This one is amazing, honestly. This one's amazing. Um, Great example. Another one is, um, let me think. Um, so, yeah, so um, during like learning about Islam, I kind of stopped drinking alcohol because um, I thought, yeah, it doesn't really, I mean, I didn't really like it anyways, but. And one time I went out with my school friends and they asked me, why aren't you drinking? And I kind of just evaded that question saying, I just don't like alcohol. And... But you're not Muslim that time? No, no, no. no. Yeah, okay. 
because okay. I thought, yeah, alcohol, yeah, it just didn't make sense to me. So learning about Islam. Um, you're I actually kind of already, almost ready at that time, isn't it? I think your journey yeah. started long... Long time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I, because we talked about food. Can I ask you something else? It's also, as I've read in, in, in some of the papers, like, you're from South Korea. I'm not sure um, if I'm, I'm really ignorant. Like, I, I've seen that they uh, eat snakes. Some people, not all of them. Some people eat snakes. Some people eat dogs and stuff like that. Is that true? Is that really happens in that part of the world? Uh, mm. South Korea? N not in Korea anymore. Okay. They used to, used to some people, yeah. Have you ever tested? No, I've it? never. <laughs> okay, no. then you didn't have to give up. Okay, <laughs> that's fine, no problem. Um, you know when I said um, you were actually leaving a faith you had, faith you were born with, mm. not born with actually, you adapted it, to something really new. Um, what are the attractions? What really ticked for you? I know you said um, Tawheed, the oneness of Allah attracted you, fasting, any other tick box that you thought, this is good, this is amazing, that is amazing. Mm. What other ones? So the biggest thing other than the oneness of Allah is um, I was talking to one of the brothers in Islamic society in my uni and he was telling me about um, why Islam is the one true religion. And the one thing that clicked really well for me was the preservation of Quran and how there was so much effort gone into that through centuries by so many people to preserve the actual words of Allah and how everyone remembers it as well, which, which made logical sense as in Surely if it's the words of God, it needs to be kept the same in order for it to yeah. be actually valid, right? And how Islam being the only religion that does that um, kind of made logical, made me kind of question other faiths in some senses. How can other faiths be true? But um, yeah, so that's kind of the main thing. I think even for me as a Muslim, I find that... Um um, very, um, what do you call it, proud that I have a religion that is exact wording kept 1400 years with the sound, even the sentence, a long sentence, a short sentence, even the dot are there. Mm -hmm. You know, like when we say, ha, ha, in even that, exactly how the Prophet was pronouncing it was there. Even the chain of, like you said, memorization was one of the key points. Mm. The written form is like a secondary to us, mm. to the Muslims. So we have millions of people actually memorize the whole book. It's and that's, that is, there's no other books in the earth that can be in that level, to mm. be honest with you. Even for that, people should read and see what's, what's in that book. How come people memorize the whole thing? Mm. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm. That's brilliant. Why do you think that Islam is the truth and salvation? Sorry, could you say it again? Why do you th feel or think that Islam is the only salvation or mm. the truth? Well, the truth um, is in, as I mentioned, about so the... So if you can com not compare, actually, I'm sure other religions have truth in it. We believe as a Muslim that they are mixed up. Some people actually put their own words and one things and it's mm. mixed is what we know by the sects and the groups and this and that. Um, so what, is there any other reasons? I know you said about the Quran thing. Any other reasons that um, makes you feel that this is the only salvation? Because mm. I... Um, it's the only salvation. So, I might not be saying the same or the, the most correct thing that was mentioned. I might not be remembering the okay. same way, but um, from when I was talking to the same brother, um, his name is Rafi, mm -hmm. and um, when I was talking to him, the, the truth, he because I went through a phase of saying, why is there a need to choose one religion? 
Because I thought, as long as you live a good life, as long as you find the good things in different religions, kind of pick and choose, I thought that's still fine, right? But what he said that made me also click as well was um, humans have like an innate tendency to look, seek the truth, to follow the truth, right? And Islam um, made the most logical sense to me, how the oneness of God and so many other things like the preservation. I'm struggling to think of any more no, examples. I mean, well. this, is, yeah. this is actually a difficult question to ask as well. We get asked that all the time. Mm. Some people will say, why do I have to follow religion? If the religion here to make people good, I am good. I'm giving charity. Mm. I'm doing all the good things. It's true. Mm. I'm doing good things. But what the missing point here is, you are not acknowledging the one who created you. Mm. It's almost like you, you, you know, you're denying your mother. You know, like, you're good with everybody else, but you're not good with your mom. Mm. Is that a good thing? No. Yeah. If someone gives you something, if, if I give you a thousand pounds, you would thank me, right? If you don't, that means you're ungrateful. It's mm. not a good sign. You still have the ego. I'm not going to say thank you to that person. So we know if God created me, he's given me eyes, he's given me everything I need, I should thank him. Mm. So if you don't thank him, that means you still have the ego, or you're, you're still not there. So you're not a good person. Mm. You might do good things, but you're doing it for yourself. For yourself. Mm. So when you become religion, actually we're doing it for the one who created me. Mm. You know, I'm acknowledging him. And I'm actually thanking him. He doesn't want me to, he doesn't want food from me, but he just wants thanking, that's all. And that's a good, it's a good teaching, mm. you know. So that's one of the ways of understanding. Um, where did you do your Shahada? Where? Where did I do it? Um, it's, actually, um, it's actually quite a funny story. So um, as part of the uni society, the Islamic society, there was a talk by, I'm struggling to remember his name, um, but he was... Okay, one then I'm going to come, I'm going to come to that, because it's quite interesting to you. Oh, okay, okay, I, so shall I just say... Time. Okay, so I'm going to ask the brothers and sisters to wait with us for that answer, so that's oh, quite okay. interesting, we're okay, going for okay, a little okay. break. Dear brothers and sisters, we're going to for a small break, you were, I'm sure you're still with us, we're going to hear how did he took his shahada and with the feelings, and what after shahada, what happened, and the reaction from his family or friends, any, anyone uh, very close to him. So stay with us, inshallah. So we're going to go for a small break. Wassalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back again to our community. We are talking to our friend and the guest who recently done his shahada and we are talking about his journey to Islam and it's amazing the way he described Islam and this, how he moved towards uh, Islam as a faith. And you know, the way he described his feelings and his activities, it's amazing actually. For the Muslims, I think it shames me, you know, like the way he explained, he's only a month old, like a, a baby, honestly. He just took Shahada a month ago, and, but he knows about the Islam, the way he does, it's, it's, it makes sense. And he's a, a medical student himself, a still young man. So we're going to talk to him about his uh, feelings when he took his shahada. You know, that, that this is a big point where it actually changing your life, where you, how you see things. Mm -hmm. So my brother, welcome again. Thank you. <laughs> I love keep asking you, saying welcome again and again. Actually, <laughs> it's an honor to, to have you with us. No, um, your preparation of Islam is, looks like a long, long way back. Actually, you're almost getting ready. You tried yourself, yeah. give up uh, drinking. Um, fasting before you become Muslim and uh, learning about Islam in your school age. You know, you're already there. There's something within your heart that, mm. uh, or someone or someone shaping you towards that. Mm. We believe it's inspired by God, of course, but he shaped you with your own will. God will not force you into something, mm. you see? And you deserved it, whatever you believe, you deserve to be a part of this. So it's, mm. it's given you as a gift. Mm -hmm. So when we say this is as a gift, this is the most amazing gift can, a gift can be given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
you know, we're honored to have that. Um, if I could ask you your feelings, just the feelings you had through the Shahada and how did you take Shahada? Okay, so, yeah, as you said, um, it all, Islam has been like a long journey for me and kind of learning about it and kind of, it all made logical sense but there was something missing in the heart to actually change myself into that religion. And I still had doubts about whether I could actually practice the religion or how my family would react and all that kind of stuff. But there was an event that kind of changed that. So as part of the Islamic society at my uni, um, there was an, a talk, talk done by a speaker that struggle to remember right okay. now but one of the things that he mentioned was about death uh, it's a bit deep but um, how anyone can just die instantly like you could just go out the street and then just die like that so when I kind of learned that um, I was talking about that to one of my flatmates um, after the talk and kind of knowing that I could die instantly and still knowing, whilst knowing that I haven't done enough good deeds or I haven't done the good deeds to go to heaven, that really scared me in a sense. And so that's one part of why maybe there's no point in doubting it anymore. I should just get on with it. And another thing, that was um, said by one of my flatmates, his name's Uzair. Uh, he mentioned, um, he mentioned about how Allah is always looking after us. He's always looking at our sins, of course, but he's always um, looking after us and he's always going to help us through hard times. And knowing that really put a peace in my heart and it put a smile on my face. It was a very, very weird, weird feeling. When you say weird, is it good or positive? It was really good. Positive. Positive, feelings. very okay. positive, yeah. Um, it, if I could describe it, it almost felt like um, my mind clearing, everything's going white. Wow. It was such an amazing kind of feeling. And that's when I thought, yes, I'm ready. Even though I still have doubts whether um, um, if my family would still love me, in a sense, or if, my, if I could actually practice the religion well. I just thought... Um, Does your family know? No, they do not. But okay. I'll get to that later. But, um, yeah, so that's why I thought... I should just do it right now because Allah, I know Allah will guide me through it, the long journey and He will always protect me and He only means good for me. And so that's when I took the Shahada, just right there and then in my friend's room. Okay, who yeah. took the Shahada? Your friend took it? Oh. Did, yeah. Was someone there with you taking Shahada? Yeah, my friend okay. was there. He was telling me how to do it as well, okay. do the wudu as well. And he then, must be a special friend then. He is. He is a very special friend. And Did you mention his name? Or? Yeah, his name is Uzair. Uzair. Mm -hmm. May Allah bless him. You know, he's, he, may, he helped you and mashallah, may Allah bless him. Mm -hmm. There are other friends that helped as well. But it's one, yeah. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've done your shahada, did you... I see most of the people, emotionally they break down. Mm. I don't know if you had that. Did you have that feelings? Mm, I would just really happy oh, to be honest. Brilliant. Is, mm, well, yeah. Okay, An another f uh, funny one and I'll, I'll move on actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, what was the most surprising event after you took Shahada? Do you have any surprising ones? Surprising events? Um, so, could you expand on that question a bit so more? So, surprising so means like could be um, you took the Shahada, 
and something amazing happened. Mm. Something amazing happened. A lot of our, uh, when I take interviews, I've seen a lot of people said, uh, you know, oh, wow, something happened like that. Something amazed them. Something amazing. Mm. So we believe sometimes that God uh, um, uh, gives them that, a, uh, a, a peace within themselves that, wow, you feel comfortable. comfortable. You know, did you have that or anything? Uh, yes, so I actually said the shadow again in, a, in front of many other brothers in the society. Um, he must be very famous. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, quite a lot of people okay. know me. Uh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yeah. And that night, um, I felt really comfortable because I kind of saw so many brothers there. And everyone was giving me a hug, and just knowing there are people around oh, how me. How about the sisters? <laughs> I'm sure there were sisters there, right? Um, it was actually... How did they uh, welcome you? How did they... I'm, it's only joking, because you said you, the brothers hugged you. I was going to say, did oh, the yeah. sister hug you? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. All right, no problem. Okay. Um, I have a question for you that... Um, your friends the one who knows that you became Muslim. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's, there's, a, um, there's a change within yourself, probably dressing, the food, um, like you said, drinks. So there is a change, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The places you go to. So first question, did you become a better person or were you better before? As a person? Um, as a person, um, I'd say I'm trying to be a better person. Um, for sure. So your faith dictates you to become a better person? Yes, I think so. Um, just from simple things like keeping myself more cleaner, keeping wudu, to... Um, and also, I've been trying less to lie, just trying to be a better person overall as well. So if your parents find, do find that, mm. or anyone, they're looking at you, they will say he became a... He looks like a more sensible. I mean, okay. as, a, as a person, he looks like a sensible person. He mm. didn't become a, a something bad. So I'm sure they might acknowledge that. That would help them probably in that probably, sense. Okay, yeah. he became a better person. He's more loving. He's more caring. This is what we've been told um, that after worshiping God, your parents are the second of uh, you know helping them. Mm. You know, they need it's our duty to look after them. Mm, Even if they're not Muslim, we still have to be nice to them, kind to them, mm -hmm. and we look after them. It's our mm. duty as a Muslims. Um, do you pray for them? I'm sure you do. I do, of course. I pray for their health, and I also pray that one day they will kind of understand me, understand Islam as well, hopefully, inshallah. And yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a question. I know it doesn't make sense, but I, 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 I think it's amazing. So um, I've never been asked. I've, I have seen people asked. If you had a chance to speak to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace be upon him. So if you had, if you had a chance, I know it's not going to be here. So what would you, what would you uh, ask him? Ooh, so is there really? There's a lot of things I want to ask. How, how the one thing? So there could be one thing. Ooh. I'll probably um, ask him to make my journey in Islam easier. Ask him to make dua for me and to um, kind of guide me, but also guide my, the, those people around me to understand Islam more as well. Brilliant. You know, he only can make uh, um, a dua for us now because he's not around. Mm. So as a Muslim, we believe that he only can pray to God for us and um, um, the guidance it comes from God. Mm. He is the example of showing us that's how you do it. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, yes, it's from you God. see? Mm. So we, um, he's a human, but he had the revelation. Okay, okay. So that's how we see it. So we don't pray to him, we pray to Allah. Okay. That's the difference between other faiths. They pray directly to, uh, if you go to Christianity, they directly pray to Prophet Jesus. Mm. And some uh, Catholic would pray to Mother Mary. So. 
we say this shouldn't be the case. We should pray to God, the one who created of everything. Mm. That's what we say. Um, now you became Muslim. What? Uh, how do you feel? As a, do you have? You have a lot of Muslim friends. I'm sure they're not practicing. Do you give them dawah? Do you help them to understand their religion? I'm sure you find people actually they don't know nothing about their religion. <laughs> they uh, more Muslim. But yeah. do mm. you, do you have a chance to speak to them? Yeah. So I have. Um, and how do they how do they react? <laughs> I wonder. I would. I love to know. I have one or two friends that are interested as well. Okay. And yeah. I tell them what I can about what I know. But obviously, it's still early days, and I'm, I, just, I don't know enough to make dawah to help them through Islam. I'm still, I still need to help myself oh. through this journey. So I try to tell them what I can about what I know about Islam, but or I try to just guide them to, to other people who know better, yeah. How about, uh, I'm sure you met a um, few Muslims that they don't even practice their own religion. Students, mm. they, don't, they don't pray, they don't do this, they do everything they're not supposed to do. Um, of course, uh, uh, Islam, we believe Islam, uh, uh, God is a very is merciful. You know, whatever sins you do, if you ask him sincerely for the forgiveness, he will forgive you. It's not a problem. Uh, but you have to be sincere mm. to ask for forgiveness and not to do it again. So, do you uh, had a chance to speak to the Muslims who are not practicing and tell them to do something good? Did you ever try that? Ooh. Have you tried? Well, I myself haven't had the chance to do that yet. Okay. But I've heard... Um, it would help them, you know why? Because I remember, remember in, the old, uh, in an exhibition, one guy brought a Muslim man. Hmm. Man means, I'm assuming, is about 22, 30, 23 years old. Man. He's born Muslim, but he never practiced religion. Okay. He, does, he said... He told me, I don't know how to read Arabic, oh, yeah. I don't know what it is. Mm. I never pray, I don't know. he told me all these things. So that man brought him to me and said, can you explain to him, he wants to learn. And I thought, you were there, so one of the sisters were there. She became Muslim year before. Mm. And I thought, I take him to her. Mm. This may help. So I took him to her and I said to him, he born Muslim, but he doesn't practice. He wants to learn now. And he wasn't born Muslim. You became Muslim a year ago. And he's coming to, to you to learn. And mm. I thought that would, logically, I thought that would work. Because if I give him a lecture, he will say, oh, I had that before my dad told me. <laughs> <laughs> and he spent about 20 minutes with that sister and come down and said, man, I'm going to start practicing now. He makes oh, wow. You know? amazing. And he helped. So you, as a new Muslim, he helps the ones who are not practicing and once you say, they, it clicks in their head sometimes that I born Muslim, but am I Muslim? Am I practicing? Islam is not something that you say and you are. Mm. You have to do work. Yeah. You sure. have a duty to do. Benefit others, benefit the environment, benefit the humanity, animals. You know, Prophet, Mo Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, imagine the last day started, Qiyamah started and you have a tree, small tree you want to plant it in your hand. He said, don't d drop it. You make sure you seed it. Mm. So you, the importance of the environment is given, if you look at now, it's amazing. Mm. He said, don't waste any water, even if you are doing what do in the ocean. Can you imagine 1400 years ago? He's to, now we know the importance of the water. There are millions of people dying no pure water. Mm. He said, don't hide your animals. Don't put too much into in, in, in the donkeys. Don't, don't put too much load in it. He said not to do that. Can you imagine the 1400 years ago these things were being told? Yeah. But to do these things. And now we're still learning. Mm. And if we practice our deen, if Muslims practice their own religion, it would have been amazing. One more thing I want to say, because you will hear this lot of things. A lot of people will talk about Islam in criminal laws. Islam gives you a, a, a practical lifestyle. Hmm. It's a law and order as well. It's a divine law and order. Mm -hmm. So sustain the humanity and keep them uh, flowing in a nice way. So it will tell you don't cheat, don't lie. 
don't kill, you know, um, be nice to everyone, be nice to your neighbors. If, you've, if, you've, if you're eating so much and your neighbors don't have food, you're not a Muslim, they don't know what you do. These are conditional things. Mm. You can change any time, you see. So when it comes to criminal laws, the hard laws, that if you steal something, this will happen to you. If, you. if you rape somebody, this will happen to you. These are criminal laws, always harsh to protect others. That's the thing, people don't understand. So they always talk about those things. Criminal laws of any country, any state, always harsh. Mm. Because to protect others, the victims. Mm -hmm. So people just mistakes these things when it comes to understanding religion. Oh, why is it so harsh? It's not for you. It's for the criminals. And protecting the mass, the, 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 uh, the humans. So people don't repeat those uh, um, criminal activities. Mm. So, my um, another question to you now. Uh, are you studying religion now? Um, I'm trying to. Um, I've actually joined a class for, for new, um, new Muslims in the East London Mosque right here. And I've only um, had the chance to go once, but um, I'm looking forward to learning more about the stories of the prophets. And, and the other day I've learnt and solidified my knowledge on the six fundamental of the beliefs of Islam. So the um, belief in one God, um, belief, belief in the angels, belief in the, the holy texts, belief in the prophets, uh, belief in the day of judgment and the predestination. And yes, yeah, so I've learning, I'm, I'm learning where I can to, to better, better myself in this faith. Yeah. Did you ever, um, did you have a chance to um, read the life of the prophet? Have you ever a chance? To, it would be amazing to, uh, uh, to do, because life of the prophet is, is the explanation of Quran. Mm. So that's the, he's the living life of the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. Unless you do the whole life, you will not understand his vision or his, uh, his way of lifestyle, you will not understand. What people are doing is they're picking and choosing what they want to hear, mm -hmm. what they want to learn. They're not seeing the whole thing. He's, he was so merciful, he was kind, he was, the, he was the leader, he was the imam, he was the normal father. You see what I mean? He was a community leader. He used to, uh, and so if you don't understand the whole picture, and if you just pick and choose, then you're actually missing a big point. Hmm. So it's always good to learn the whole seerah of the prophet, and then it will make sense to you. Hmm. You will understand where people are coming from. Hmm. Sometimes people, what they do is they learn about his defense war, and they go, oh, let's talk about world. See what I mean, jihad all the time? But they don't, they, they don't understand when he asks, how do you forgive people? They don't understand this one. Because mm. they haven't learned it. How do you deal with non-Muslims? How do you with the, deal with the neighbors? It's amazing. Mm. He felt for them. You know, he's had empathy for them. This is how we should be. So somehow people are actually picking in and, and choosing how they want to do it. And then it becomes a problematic. Mm. You know, I know what, what one of the, um, um, I was doing a show actually a uh, while back. And when we hear a Romeo sometime, people, people, Islam sees Islam as a very, because of the, probably media played a role, that Islam as a very brutal, uh, very offensive religion, very, you know, like strong macho man, something like that. The, the picture comes into the head. They don't care about the women or the wives or the you know, daughters, something like that. It's not true. But it's true, some Muslim does it. I agree here. Just because his name is Muslim, it doesn't mean he's following his religion. Mm. Or he learned about his religion. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, when we hear say Romeo, we think he has to be someone in Western paper or somebody... So I was listening to that, I mean, I was reading a list of the what Prophet is, how he used to deal with his wives. It's, it's mind-blowing. You know, he's, he used to joke with his wife all the time, and then they used to uh, run together. Can you imagine he's a commander of the uh, believers? 
Hmm. And then if the, if the wife was drinking water, he would drink it from the same point where, he was, where she was putting her lips on, hmm. you know? And they, and she would listen to them. He would listen to what they, what they had to say. And he was really fair with every one of them. And there is not a single statement you will find that he was um, harsh with the, any woman, children or anyone else. And his question was, if you, if you don't respect the oldest and if you don't love the, uh, the juniors, the younger one, you're not a Muslim. You're not one of us. Mm. It's a really big statement. So somehow Muslims are not practicing. So somehow we actually, uh, like you said, you saw friends are praying and then you, it affected you. Mm. Sure. And if we, if, 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 if someone is, imagine Muslim selling drugs or this and that, that person run away from Islam. Because how can he be Muslim and doing these things? Mm. And we see people doing that. Mm. Okay, my friend, I don't have much time. I know I can spend all my time with you. <laughs> I can do that. Um, one of the um, things I wanted to ask you is, um, you know when you pray? Yeah. Because pray is like you're connecting with Allah. You're talking to Allah. Sure. You know, it's the best time if you can understand and if you can connect with Allah. How do you feel when you pray? I want you to explain if it's possible. Mm, so we're not asking you to. I'm not. We're only asking you to learn. That's why we, we want to learn from you. Nothing else. We okay. understand your. We want to understand your feelings. Um, so when I pray, I feel when I'm on the ground. I'm not sure what that's called exactly. So I put. Uh, when I do sujud. Yeah, I put sujud, my head yeah. in the floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's when I feel when I feel the most comfortable. I feel. Wow. I just feel comfortable being there, and I actually quite enjoy being in that position. Wow. Um, knowing that um, Allah is looking over me and honestly um, it kind of eases my burden a lot through through life as well mm. yeah so. you know what um, you amaze me um, you amaze me because um, we do feel sometimes but not always you see myself um, not always, because, but this is the best, best position you could be. Mm. That you're humbling yourself in front of the one who created you. And there's no other position to be humbleness. You know, this, the, this is the best point as well. Mm. And he told us to do it. Mm. We're following his command as well. So it's amazing. Um, sure. Two young Muslims, brothers or sisters, uh, ones are watching you now. What, what advice would you give to them? Um, what advice? Um, I mean, I'm in no position to give advice to people. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> one thing that I'd say and I've heard is to pray. Just to pray five times a day, to make sure you pray. Um, and I believe that if you just pray, everything hopefully will come naturally. And yeah, I think that would be my advice. Your um, um, half minute, your last word to our viewers. Um, shall I look in the... Yeah, this camera? one, yeah. Um, honestly, um, it's been an honor being here. It's been an really good time talking to you about this and I hope that people watching this are able to learn more about Islam as well and as and I will learn more about Islam um, so that I could help more people as well so thank you for listening to us and yeah Thank you. Okay. I want to thank you first for being with us and I hope to have you again, inshallah. inshallah we'll yeah. talk about your uh, med medicine and uh, stuff like that. It will, it will help other viewers uh, to learn for the kids to choose a path when it comes to education. Um, thank you again and again and um, hope to see you again, inshallah. inshallah. Dear viewers, um, we are about to um, finish now. Um, I hope I could continue more. Um, if you made any mistakes, um, it's intentional, do forgive us. Um, I really enjoyed and we pray for our brother 
and we'll ask him to pray for us because as soon as you take shahada you just like a newborn again your sins are forgiven and that's amazing um, for us we've got plenty of sins in our, our shoulder so may Allah forgive us may Allah forgive everyone and please make dua for us I'll see you next time wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh